Hello everybody. In this episode, I'm going to talk about water column. Now, as plumbers, we use water column a lot for testing and things like that. It's just most of us don't really know the science, the math, uh, the physics behind it and what's really going on there. We kind of just know, well, you fill it up to there and that's how we test it and that's how we've always tested it. Um, well, if you've ever done any kind of slab work, which would be the plumbing under, say, a residential slab home or a uh, commercial building where you've got some plumbing pipes that run under where the concrete's going to be poured. Well, we have to test that. And if you've ever done it, you know, you get a 10 foot section, a three inch pipe, and you go to that low point where uh, the sewer would eventually be tied in, and you glue it together, and you got what they call a 10 foot riser. Uh, and then we stake that off with some strings and we fill it full of water. And that's how we test our plumbing system before they pour the concrete. Well, what are you doing? you just generated a 10 foot water column. Now a 10 foot water column is going to create about 4.3 PSI at the bottom. So you might say, well, PSI, why don't we just pump it up with air? Well, 4.3 PSI is gonna be really hard to find on most air gauges. And even then, if you do have a gauge that reads that low, there's a lot of factors when you're dealing with those low, low pressures that are gonna mess you up. Yeah, a temperature, you know, if this thing's sitting in the sunshine, uh, atmospheric pressure, all kinds of things can throw you off when you're dealing with that low of pressure. But water column is always gonna be water column no matter what you do to it. So uh, how do we measure that? Well, I got me a piece of inch and a half uh, PVC uh, DWV here, and I took out my tape measure and I made some uh, graduations, some little inch marks going up and down, and I cut this pipe at 28 inches. The reason for that, uh, every 28 inches of, of uh, water column is going to generate one PSI at the base of it. Uh, it's really like 27 point something, 27 and 5 eighths, something like that, but let's keep it simple. Let's not try to do that really hard math to make it super accurate because we're dealing with really, really low pressures here. Uh, so just every 28 inches generates one PSI at the base of it. And it doesn't matter if it's an inch and a half pipe, it doesn't matter if it's a two inch pipe, it doesn't matter if it's a three inch pipe. It doesn't even matter if it's one of those big water towers that we call a stand pipe, it's a water tower that doesn't have legs on it, just looks like a big barrel. Uh, it doesn't matter how much water, it's based off of the elevation. Every 28 inches of water column is gonna be one PSI at the bottom always. And uh, that also works in the other direction. Um, if you ever swam in the deep end of an Olympic sized pool, I used to love doing this as a kid, and you swim way down to the bottom, maybe grab that little drain grate, and you can feel all that pressure pushing on you. It works the same way going in the other direction. Every 28 inches down is one PSI. That's why we have, have to have submarines and stuff to go way down in the bottom of the ocean. And that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a swimming pool. It doesn't matter if it's a lake, a pond, or the ocean. It's always the same. Every 28 inches of water column is one PSI, going down and going up. Um, going up, a lot of times we call that head pressure, and it increases every 28 inches. So if I went another 28 inches above this one, I'm gonna have two PSI down there. And that's how I calculated out that 4.3 PSI on that 10 foot riser. Uh, <clears throat> well, that's the basic gist of it uh, when dealing with water column. Uh, you can use water column to measure those very, very low pressures, such as a tankless water heater. If you ever have to work on a tankless water heater and you got to call tech support or something like that, they're going to require you to have a digital manometer, which measures inches in water column. Um, now, old school way, they used to have a thing called a U-tube, which was a glass tube that went in a U-shape like that, and you'd fill it full of water to its zero marks, put gas up at one end, and it would push it like that, and that's how you would measure the inches of water column. Uh, a really old, primitive way of measuring inches of water column, which is something I want to show you, um, is you take a bucket, 
And here again, I took my tape measure and put some uh, inch marks on here. And you can take your gas line down, um, fill this all the way to the top with water, and put your gas line in here. And if you put it in, say, about an inch deep in that water, it's going to bubble. Most of your gas lines are going to be at seven and a half inches of water column uh, as long as they're regulated properly. But if you go down to two inches, it's going to bubble. And as you get on down and you start approaching that where those pressures are balancing out, which typically should be seven and a half inches of water column, uh, it's going to stop bubbling. Those pressures are going to balance out. It's going to stop bubbling. Now, if I was to keep on going down, that water is going to start backing up into this pipe. Now, it's not going to come way up here because it's got all that pressure. It's going to ride right there at whatever inches of water column. If it's six, it's going to sit at six. If it's eight, it's going to sit at eight. But that's kind of an old way of doing it. And here again, it doesn't matter if that's a swimming pool or a pond, a lake, or the ocean. If you've got seven and a half inches of water column of pressure on here, it's going to go down seven and a half inches deep into any body of water. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, the reason why you would use water column versus a PSI gauge on something like a tankless water heater, that seven and a half inches of water column, you see where it is on here? Remember, 28 inches of water column is one PSI at the base. Seven and a half is about a third of a PSI. It's so small and so hard to read. Uh, a pressure gauge, it just isn't going to work for you. Uh, I know there's some that read down that low, but like I said, there's other factors involved. Atmospheric pressure, uh, heat, temperature, uh, different things going on there. When you're trying to measure that accurate, it's going to mess up. But water, water column, gravity is always going to do the same thing. If it's not, we've got a bigger problem. So just take this with you. Every 28 inches of water column is gonna be one PSI at the base of it. It doesn't matter if it's an inch and a half, two inch, three inch, or a great big old water tower. That's why they put those water towers way up in the air is to help generate that PSI so their pumps don't have to work so hard. So if you wanted to figure out how much PSI, you knew how tall one of those water towers are, every 28 inches is one PSI. Well, I hope that gets you somewhere. I hope I explained that well enough. Um, if you got any questions, of course, you can ask me. Um, I'll be around. Well, thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something. Um, just remember, it's a lifetime of learning, so always be out there trying to gobble up any little pieces of information. You can uh, figure out ways to apply that to your job, your career, and we'll all go a long way together. Thanks a lot.